Hello, a beautiful people. What is up? It's officially fall. I officially need more protection on my head to stay warm. A warm cup of coffee in your hands, well, acceptable, is not quite enough. It's getting there though, but today I'd like to talk about something I've been, you know, kind of delving into recently, something that's kind of cool, and that's esoteric fascism. Ooh, sounds spooky. So I'm sure if you've been on the internet or listened to this YouTube channel, you've heard me talk about, you know, surfing the Caliuga, riding the Caliuga. So I thought I might actually explain what that is, since very few people seem to know anything about Savitri Divi, or the history behind her ideas, or why her ashes are actually interned right next to George Lincoln Rockwell's. So that's interesting, right? Anyway, so who was this person? Uh, she, basically, she was a spy for the Axis powers during World War II, so she helped the Nazi government. She was an ecologist, a fascist sympathizer, and an author. I'm actually reading, th well, audiobooking through all of her books as of late. Interesting reading, definitely while you're grinding on some silly video game. Definitely a, an adequate use of time. Highly recommend Savatri Devi's work. But what's she about? So basically, she combines Hinduism with uh, basically turning Hitler into a false idol, right? So the Kali Yuga, basically in Hindu philosophy, is the you know time of destruction in a sense. It's you know there are four seasons, which is a recurring theme throughout you know pretty much every sort of historical description of time, right? You know. Good men make hard, or good times, good times make weak men, yada yada, you get the picture. And the same sort of thing happens in Indian philosophy with their different cycles. So, in Savitri Devi's works, basically, she tries to equate the Jews to the Kali Yuga, right? So, in her opinion, the destabilizing destructive force was the Jews, and then Hitler was actually the avatar of Vishnu, and so, you know, the, the force that was going to cleanse the world of the Kali Yuga, or the Jews, would be, you know, Hitler through Vishnu, and that was her idea. She also had some ideas around environmentalism, so, you know, she believed that people that hurt animals should be murdered, so immediately she's my spirit animal. Not only is she edgy, but, you know, obviously she's got some consistency issues uh, there. You know, because two wrongs don't make a right, obviously murdering people for harming animals doesn't really solve the issue. But I can share this sentiment. It's, it's a nice sentiment. I wonder if she was alive today, what her views on abortion are. I have to look. But that would be an interesting read, so, you know, definitely a spirit animal of mine, in a sense. And, you know, when you're talking about, like, sort of this esoteric religiosity view of, like, the great man theory throughout history, right? So you have basically these individuals that are shaping the course of history with their own hands, you know, like Napoleon, Hitler, and all of that. And so they they are the ones that, you know, if you believe in this theory, that is, they are the ones that create history, create, you know, the country, the borders of our own countries, and just shape time into its will. It kind of does make sense if you're talking about an esoteric view of the world and tying in, you know, the ancient with the present, right? You could do the same thing, say, with the Logos in America, you know. If you really wanted to, I could write that book right now. And literally zero people would buy it because who would ever want to read my scratch? But yeah, you could take the Logos right now to America and it's like modern day interpretations and principles and then you know equate them to the fall of rome which is basically what so many people have done throughout the years in much probably more eloquent ways and much fewer words than i would be pressed to do but you know it, it's an interesting thought right and so why is this trend though what i'm interested in mostly thinking about things like this is why is this trend universal is this, is like, are the four seasons, or the fourth turning, you know, if you wanted to put it in modern western terms, a good book if you haven't read it, the fourth turning, is that somehow a universal trait of human beings, and what causes it? I want to understand the mechanisms behind the, you know, seasons, the, the things that bring us to the Kali Yuga, in essence, if you would. 
and all of the seasons related to that. Is it purely because it's a religious phenomenon? Or is there something built in man? And as we see, like, states that have evolved past religion, we'll see if this trend continues, for instance. I have a feeling it will. I have a feeling it's something much more innate into human beings, right? And I'm not sure what it is, though, because I've been thinking about it a while. Like, going this, like everyone can recognize the, you know, hard, men, or hard times create good men trend, right? But very few people, I think, are thinking about the lower end about why this is true. And why these seasons occur. Because I don't think the answer is simply uh, as simple as, you know, the times that you're born in, right? Because great men are created all throughout history at all throughout different times. So, you know, it's just from a reality standpoint, it doesn't align that that's the only explanation. I think that's a phenomenon related to it. I think, the, you know, hard men create good times, etc is entirely related to it, but I feel like there's a much larger underlying cause that ties it together with the Kali Yuga with all of these other, you know, religious interpretations and sort of the seasonal view of the world. And, you know, I, I haven't gotten there yet as far as figuring it out. I'm going to continue to think about it, but I highly recommend you read these very ancient occultist books because they're very fun. You know, Take it with a grain of salt, but at least when you see someone tell you that they're surfing the Kali Yuga, you at least know that they're somewhat involved in uh, fascism or occult knowledge. And that already makes them a friend, right? Either way, you have a good day.